Hey everyone, welcome back. Shark here, got a 1v1 for you today on the map Famineville Approach, as requested, uh, between two challenger level players. So first off, as the Axis, we have Chloro Ra from South Korea, ranked number 32 at the Wehrmacht using the Mechanized Battle Group, and then his opponent, Treads from the Philippines, ranked number 23 with the US using the Airborne Battle Group. This match highlights an interesting approach to the US Airborne Battle Group, especially in 1v1s, Features absolutely outstanding sniper play and some sniper counterplay that I think is interesting. And it also provides a great example of how high level players attack this map in particular. If there are any other maps, battle groups, or play approaches that you want to see, hit me up in the comments below and we'll make it happen. Uh, with that, on to the video. Alright. So we got per request a castle map Famineville approach. Uh, there are a couple of these out there. We got uh, Chloro Ra. Uh, playing as a Wehrmacht here, starting on, I guess it's the west side of the map, it's the, really the bottom of the screen default view. Going for double pioneer, getting his infantry complete. company out. We and then like Treads, the playing as the Americans, um, going for uh, a barracks right off the rip, and a second scout squad, interesting. So I wonder if we're going to see uh, Airborne and Pathfinders here, um, and then he's going to get his first rifle squad out, okay, for uh, matching with Grenadiers. Um, I, won't I feel like Grenadiers, in the latest meta, they're they're pretty strong. They're pretty solid mainline infantry. Uh, and they scale very well against rifles until rifles get a lot of upgrades. Plus their utility, the, the med kits, the sandbags, uh, make them really, really valuable. So uh, I think that's why we consistently see, you know, multiple Grenadier builds uh, for Wehrmacht players at the, at the high levels. And so just thinking specifically about the map here, You've got the Pioneers kind of capping on the flanks, going for both of the high uh, fuel points here. And then the Grenadiers kind of pushing up the center. And and I like this approach because it allows the Grenadiers to support uh, in either direction. And here you go. All right, so here's the first engagement here in the center. Grenadiers take a couple of shots. And they're actually going to pursue because uh, I'm sure he's worried about the Rifleman pushing on this fuel. Um... So Chloro is gonna gonna back his pioneers out towards the munitions point. Second Grenadier squad is also moving this direction, so it looks like he's gonna prioritize holding onto his fuel point here, which is a good outcome for Treads. If you can force the opponent to fight to preserve their own fuel, I think uh, that puts you at a pretty significant advantage. Rifles try to close the distance, but now they're gonna find themselves in a two v one against Grenadiers at range. And standing out in the open without cover, yep. And Treads is going to retreat. Fortunately, uh, no models lost, but he also doesn't have any early healing. He's got a second rifle squad coming out through the center, but I don't think he wants to take that engagement against two Grenadier squads, because they're just going to lose it and bleed manpower. Now with his scouts, Treads is taking kind of the same approach that Chloro did with him capping on the flanks. Uh, the scout's able to jump into this building, and so... Uh, they should be able to do a decent amount of damage, especially to these pioneers here. And again, good use by Chloro of the cover, forcing the rifles to kind of fight out in the open. And this is hilarious. Look at the build right now. Two scouts and three rifles uh, for treads, and two pyos and three grens for Chloro. So almost identical builds at the start. Chloro is going to go mechanized, so I think we can expect to see eight rods here. This rifle squad pushing up into the center to grab this manpower point. And then additional rifle squads on the flank. This rifle squad's gonna bleed like crazy though. And here's the third Gren squad that comes in. Oh man, one Gren squad getting focused down. But it's not gonna get wiped. And so I think Trez is gonna eventually get forced off here. Floro going for a fourth Grenadier squad. He's fucking dead. Grenadiers have been mustered for battle. Never thought I'd see the day, Grenadiers. I am very interested in the thought process here. Maybe he's worried about the American light vehicles, and so having all these Grenadiers, uh, you know, it really allows you to kind of snare, um, counter the light vehicle play, especially if you're going to get eight rods out. Grenadiers are under fire. Territory lost. And so just kind of reviewing again, scouts on the flanks and treads, it, the, I mean the map's actually basically split, uh, treads pushing the fuel here, 
And then sending his rifles right up the middle to continue to fight against these grenadiers. Uh, but I think there's a lot of risk here in this approach. It's kind of a little bit piecemeal. Um, and so he runs the risk of just bleeding a lot of manpower up front. Now he's going for the infantry support center. So, uh, you know, obviously captain will help with map presence. Uh, advanced logistics help minimize some of that manpower bleed. But man, it just feels like the grenadiers are everywhere. Right? They're coming back out to, to force the scouts away from this fuel. Uh, this rifle squad forces off the pioneers, but is probably going to lose this engagement to the Grens just based on the health. And Floro smartly also investing into that tier one officer's quarters. And I really wish this Thompson model would hit something. He's like doing no damage at all. Oh gosh. All right, here comes the captain. Rifleman using sprint to kind of cover into this engagement and try to prevent this fuel from being capped. The Grens are forced off. So Trez will get his fuel back. Captain forces the Grens to retreat. But man, with all these Grenadier squads with Vet 1, that's a lot of healing power for Chloro. And, and this has kind of been the story of the match so far, is a lot of these rifle squads in 1v2 engagements against Grenadiers uh, and really kind of suffering and, and getting bled a little bit here. Yeah, so Treads did get the healing of his headquarters. I think absolute requirement just based on how these engagements have been going. Scouts catch Pioneers trying to lay a mine over here. Uh, worth noting because Dreads does not have an engineer or a minesweeper yet. And so he does have to worry about mines kind of spread across the map, especially as he gets his motor pool and probably looks to, to get some light vehicles out. And I am really impressed with Dreads' ability to maintain pressure uh, despite until the cap coming up being down a squad uh, to Chloro. Chloro has unlocked the 8 rod and now it's just basically waiting on manpower and treads now electing to go airborne this is where you'd like I mean a grenade would be great at just kind of forcing these grins out of cover grenade the ear grenade does a little bit of damage Oh, this scout squad is in real danger here. Between the Grenadiers, yep, yeah, they're done. Enemy group neutralized. Enemy so good pickup for Chloro. Uh, he's gone tier fire. 3, Find right? Cover. And so he's getting a pack 40 out. This is a pretty standard build to complement the 8 rods. So you get a couple of pack 40s, you get a couple of 8 rods, and then you've basically got hard counters to both infantry and vehicles. So again, thinking about how the map has played out, right? You've seen support units kind of skirmishing on the flanks, right? And then for the most part, the mainline infantry units have been fighting through the center. And here we go. Now, these grenadiers in heavy cover, but about to be uh, outnumbered significantly. Here comes the Greyhound. The pack 40 is on the way up. Ooh, first shot from the Greyhound does a lot of damage. One Grenadier squad force off. The other one's eventually going to have to retreat here. And honestly, this pack 40 is, is at risk of getting overrun uh, if Treads can find it. Yep, there's the first shot onto the Greyhound, so it's forced to back away. And now, Floro going with a sniper here. So, really interested. We haven't seen the 8-rods. He's got enough fuel for two. And I think he's just feeling pressure from the U.S. infantry. This Pioneer squad takes a lot of damage, but the ref put his force off. Oh, but another Pioneer squad goes down on the flank. 
Now the sniper out on the field. Oh, this must be the flanking maneuver from the captain. There we go. There's the sniper first shot. Uh, the Greyhound's gonna move up, so the infantry are forcing on the pack, focusing on the pack 40. Pack misses the first shot onto the Greyhound, but treads his force to retreat his infantry. Ooh, sniper gets a nice shot off on the retreating captain. Now engineers out for treads, and they're gonna repair this Greyhound. Treads has done a good job of keeping the pressure on this fuel here for Chloro and keeping his fuel income low enough that you can tell he's focusing on very manpower heavy or low fuel cost uh, units. I think that's the only reason we really haven't seen the eight rods yet. Sniper clumped up with these Grens for some healing. As are the Pyos. And here comes the Greyhound. Pack 40 is going to set up and get a shot off. Right, good hit. So the Greyhound's got to back up. So Treads went for the pair drop reinforcements, uh, which is interesting. And I'm looking forward to see kind of how he employs that. I haven't seen that in 1v1s in a while. Now here's the first eight rod on the field and it's going for the flank. You got these riflemen out here and we haven't seen any grenades yet. So I think he's probably looking to, to clean up and impose some bleed on these rifles and the rifles immediately retreat. So I think it's safe to say that we're not going to see grenades. Instead, we're going to see a chaffy from treads. And so chaffy, a good counter to the eight rod, but you have to be careful with four grand squads on the field. Uh, worrying about the Faust. Oh, I don't know whose mine that is. If the sniper hit it, that'd be gross. It's probably a Wehrmacht mine, to be honest. Rifle use a flank maneuver. Yep, they run right into the mines. That sniper is safe for now. Here's the Greyhound on the flank. He gets a shot off against A-Rod, but the pack, good reface. And Tread's able to get the, the uh, Greyhound out of the way. And here's gonna go repair it again. Really good micro the pack here. Now you see Treads going for the grenade upgrade. And Flora kind of consolidating a little bit of map control here. He's taking the right flank and now with his 8 rod, Grenadier, Sniper, and Pack 40, he's going to push on the north side and gain a lot of control. And thanks to the mechanized commander, this 8 rod can cap as well. Chaffee's hit the field but is in the center. It's thinking about rotating over to help with this 8-rod. Yeah, the rifles might have done okay against this Gren Squad normally, but with this sniper there. And now here we see Paradrop reinforcements. Interesting. So using this to reinforce the rifle squad and help them keep some pressure up against this pack. Here's the Chaffee. And he's just going to drive right past the pack 40 and try to run down one more shot and this 8-rod is done. There it is. Good pickup. Pack 40 sets up. He gets one shot on the Chaffee, but the Chaffee's going to clear the cone of fire. Really good use of pair drop reinforcement, so I asked for it. Are we going to see a Faust here? No, the Grenadier is instead just going to retreat. Ooh, the Chaffee hits a mine. Man, missed opportunity. A Faust on that Chaffee plus the mine might have ended up getting the kill. <laughs> it does seem a little goofy to see riflemen getting reinforced in this para drop, but um, really smart, good, really good timing from Treads. Ooh, Captain almost goes down to the mine. Now both American vehicles engine critted, so the engineers are going to have their hands full for a minute. Grenadiers versus Pathfinders on the south side of the map. And actually, the squad of Grenadiers pushes all the way up to Tread's base to grab a cutoff with really no pressure. Pathfinder's rolling right up past the stick grenade. And uh, if is not careful, he may lose it. Gren squad. Uh, they're going to retreat. Ooh, good stick grenade here to force the issue with these riflemen. Ooh, they're at risk of going down. Now, the Greyhound's available to cover, and so the Gren squad is going to back off. 
Oh, this rifle squad gonna get burned down. Wow, good volley from the Gren squad plus the sniper. About time, Kinda. Kaffee's almost healed up. So despite I think the initial engagement going Treads way, picking up the eight rod, Cora's done a great job consolidating map control and just bleeding the rifle squads and really keeping the Greyhound from being super effective. And he's got a second pack 40 out on the field now too, so uh, you know, Greyhound can take it's the third shot that'll kill it with the armored skirts. Um, but still it has to take care to make sure that that first volley doesn't come in and get supported immediately by a Faust. And I like the way Clora has got these pack 40s set up. He's got them in, in a couple different lanes with different focus um, to give himself some flexibility. And then look at the way the Grens are kind of spaced out, providing some support. They're in heavy cover. The sniper's not going to get run down. And here we go. Here's another re, uh, pair drop of reinforcements. Another squad of Pathfinders out now, too. And this allows the rifle squads to basically just advance continuously. And put a lot of pressure on. Here, the Greyhound uh, dealing with this Grand Squad over here. And the Pack 40s, it looks like, are going to relocate. But man, this reinforcement ability... Allowing the rifles to put a lot of pressure on the Grenadiers and actually really absorb some of the losses that the sniper is incurring without being forced to retreat. So, note to self against a sniper, paradrop reinforcement is super helpful. The sniper takes enough direct fire this force to back out, as are the packs. So, Tread's nice push here to kind of retake a lot of map control and really bleed some of these Grenadiers. Now, in the meantime, Flora built his tier four, uh, and so he's only a couple fuel away from a Panzer IV. Tred's building his tier four now as well, uh, but he's still a couple minutes away from being able to afford a tank uh, or a Hellcat. And honestly, with these two pack 40s, I'd be really concerned a Hellcat just get gunned down. There we go, the first. Greyhound immediately eats a pack 40 shot. Sniper's still doing a ton of work. Double vet already, only at the 17 minute mark. But in, a, in just a minute, with that one pair drop reinforcements, Treads has basically uh, recouped the flanks of the map. Although Chloro's doing a good job pushing out through the center at the moment. One other thing I've noticed. Laura's done a fantastic job of laying sandbags and wire constantly. I mean, his, like you can see, he wired this off early in the game. Sandbags and wire here. His uh, micro and his APM is extremely high. Um, you know, not something that I think I could necessarily uh, accomplish, but uh, really, really cool to see used later in the game when normally the micro attacks from combat makes it a little bit more difficult to implement. Pack 40 gets a shot off on the Chaffee and is forced to back off. And the sniper forces the captain away. One rifle squad here. And they're actually in a bad way here with these two Gren squads. Plus the sniper, which is going to back up before it opens fire most likely just to make sure it's not at risk from the rifles. Ooh, good push here. Two rifle squads and a Pathfinder squad and the sniper forced to back up again. This rifle squad's got to be careful. Extremely low health. There we go. And now here is the re pair drop reinforcement again. Oh, Pathfinder squad in a little bit of danger. I know it's in reinforcement range, but if the sniper gets that last shot off. Instead, the sniper will focus on the rifle squad. And here comes the Greyhound uh, and the Chaffee again up through the center. Man, this ability being used to perfection to allow Treads to maintain some map presence. Uh, really, really like this. Now, Brumbear out for Chlorora. And I think, you know, I, I like the thought process here. He's clearly thinking he's had an infantry problem. He's got enough packs to deal with the light vehicles. So it makes sense to go for the Brumbear first rather than a P4. Um... He's unlocked the Panther haul in. 
Uh, but right now, there's no real need for it on the field, especially with two packs. Treads. Uh, add enough fuel. Yep, there we go. So he's going for a Hellcat. Um, and he must have seen or at least heard the Brum Bear. Ooh, first shot hits really hard. Meanwhile, Rifles and Pathfinder Force, they found a pack 40 out of position. Brum Bear is moving to reinforce. But this pack 40 crew at the risk of going down. MG42 out now as well. So Chlorara definitely feeling the pressure from Tread's rifle play. And Tread's actually going to trade out the Hellcat for a Shrimp Bolt Duster. Oh, Rifle Squad takes a huge hit from the Brum Bear. Now, granted, the Air Squad, high probability of knocking out this Rifle Squad on retreat. Greyhound's coming up to support, and the Rifle Squad will get away. Meanwhile, Chaffee in the center immediately eats a Faust and a couple of rounds from the Pack 40, and the Chaffee goes down. Yeah, that was rough. Here we've got... That was rough for Treads, but... And I just heard the cue, uh, down to 100 VPs. Treads at a huge VP advantage here, 400 to 80. And he had the triple cap on briefly. Oh, Rumbear forces the Pathfinders out of the building. MG42 in a great spot. Recon Loiter coming in. Oh, is this the Captain Mortar Barrage? Yep. And the, the Bulldozer. It can take a couple of pack 40 shots, but yeah, with both in the, that position. Rifle Squad gets off a grenade, clears one of the pack 40s. Now, Brumbear coming up to support. The problem is Treads doesn't really have any hard AT to deal with this Brumbear. Oh my goodness. It's a good thing that Brumbear doesn't have a coax, because those two uh, rifle models would have been done. And Dred's going for a Chaffee instead, which I think is interesting. I, I see... I see why. He knows he needs some dedicated AT. He's probably concerned um, about waiting for a Hellcat. Because he doesn't need necessarily to kill the Brumbear, he just needs the ability to force it away. He continues to put on the VP pressure. One AT gun knocked out by the Greyhound. Engineers almost get killed by the combination of the Brumbear and Grenadiers. More uh, reinforcements being carried dropped in, and I love this. They pick up the Pack 40 with the Pathfinders, and now it'll get reinforced. Greyhound knocks out the other Pack 40. Oh, it does get fousted by Grenadier Squad. And good at placing on the MG42. Big Gwen's. Trying to close with that Greyhound to knock it out. The Brumbear will get the kill, and now this Pack 40 is going to get cleared by the Grenadiers. Meanwhile, on the flank here, Rifles and Pathfinders fighting Grens. And you see Clora recognizing that he needs to take that center VP. He's down to 26 VPs. Chaffee gets a hit off on the Brumbear, but now is snared and hit with... Oh, and a second Panzerfaust does it, so the Chaffee hits the field and is immediately smoked. Good play with the Grenadiers. The irony here that reinforcements continue to get dropped to this rifle squad are actually preventing, now that they're pinned, the MG42 uh, is allowing the Grenadiers to cap. Oh, Pack 40 takes a chunk out of the Sherman Bulldozer, but it's going to stand in there, forces a Gren squad away, and prevents Florida from capping the center. And now here we see the carpet bomb. Right on the rear here. I uh, things aren't looking good for that sniper. It depends where it starts. Hard to tell. Oh. So MG42 gets annihilated, but the sniper and the AT guns get away. Rumbear's still in place, doing a ton of damage. One of the AT guns is cleared. Oh, rifle squad again gets away. Just a sliver of health. We saw the captain was killed at one point. Meanwhile, Flora has lost two Grenadier squads. And 
Treads here trying to get the VP advantage. It looks like he's going to get uh, a cap on here. This rifle squad at risk of getting hurt by the Brumber, but it's pulled the Brumber out of position. MG42 recruit. Here's the bulldozer. It's pretty much fully healed. Now, Treads, rifle squad and grenadier squad changing places. So fighting over this VP here. The Brum Bear is going to show up, and the Rifle Squad wisely backs out of the building. Sniper in a very forward position here. And he's he's put the VP Drain on hold for now. Oh, MG42 down to single model. Attack round through the building whiffs on the Bulldozer. Attack round at MG42 also misses. Here come the, the para-drop reinforcements, and this is... Oh, man. Flora is not really in a position to challenge this here in the center. Meanwhile, Rifle Squad also fighting the Grens up here on the south side. Everybody's bleeding out, but they're still continuing to shoot each other. Looks like the Grens are probably going to lose this one. Yep, they get knocked out. So... Treads will be able to capture that VP and then also capture the center here. And so unless... And that'll be it. I was about to say, unless he can get on that point right away. But it looks like Clorah is going to uh, surrender instead. Alright. So as we get into the build orders here, I made a couple of changes. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I wanted to highlight unit builds are still in white. But then you've got uh, individual buildings or tiers uh, in blue. And then other tech choices here in green as well as you get the battle group layout on the slide with it. So if this information, this build order review at the battle group, if that's useful to you, uh, let me know and I'll keep doing it. If you have any other ideas, I'm obviously open to it, but I like reviewing this part of the game before I get into the general gameplay. So starting with Chlorora, again, playing as a Wehrmacht mechanized battle group. He opens with two pioneers, which you see quite a bit uh, in Wehrmacht 1v1s, goes to this tier one. And then four Grenadiers, which initially I was really optimistic that this would work out. Um, like I said, I feel like in the latest patch, the Grens do really well against the Rifles until later on in the game. Uh, and I thought this was a good way to build in to the mechanized battle group. And as use of the tier one officer quarters as well to get them some veterancy, you have a lot of utility, a lot of healing. The Panzerfaust, I really like the thought process here. He goes into tier three for the Panzer Grenadier Company. It's a pack 40 out. And again, this is a good complement to the eight rods but we'll talk about a little bit of the timing here then he goes for a sniper uh which i think is you know primarily a response to dealing with the american infantry um and sniper play is really really excellent but it does also again delay the eight rod getting onto the field so he gets his first eight rod um he had enough fuel to get two uh right out the rip but uh didn't have the manpower for it ends up getting a second pack 40 which again makes sense and then going into his tier four and this is really the kind of the gap in this build, right? You need the power spike from the eight rods to deal with the infantry. And by investing in the sniper and an extra grenadier, I think it just delayed the eight rods hitting the field. And then by the time they were out, there was a Greyhound. There was a time for a Chaffee to get built. Uh, and so they just didn't have the impact that you would want uh, from an eight rod. Uh, from his tier four, he builds a Brumbear, which makes sense. Gets an MG42. You can tell he's still trying to kind of struggling with dealing against the American infantry. Uh, and then he gets an additional pioneer at the end of the game, having lost a couple. Uh, on the battle group side, he unlocks uh, the raid package, so allowing the light vehicles to cap. Obviously, unlocks the eight rod. He goes for the Panther call in. Um, again, with this battle group, it really doesn't matter if you have the tier four, but there's no cost discount. And at least with the call in, you get the vehicle as soon as you hit it rather than waiting for a build time. So I can see how that would generally be preferable. Uh, he unlocks the spotting scopes on the opposite side of the battle group and then doesn't use any more of his command points before the end of the game. All right, and then for Treads here, playing as the Americans, goes for a double scout start, uh, which is interesting in particular because he doesn't pick the airborne battle group right away. Uh, in the past, when I've seen this, it's normally because you want to play with the Pathfinder, so you pick airborne Pathfinders and you get a couple of Pathfinder squads out to kind of uh, provide some additional firepower until you get eras but it doesn't look like he made that choice until later on in the match instead he gets a barracks built uh gets three riflemen out text the med station which uh ends up being really really crucial 
because the Grens are doing a lot of damage, but he's able to get away with high model counts. And by having the med station up early, he gets the free reinforcements from casualty clearing uh, and he gets his rifles healed. So when they get back out on the field, they fare better against the Grens. Then he goes ISC, so he gets a captain. He builds his motor pool. That's when he selects the airborne battle group. Um, and again, I was initially kind of surprised with his choices here because he went recon into uh, the pair drop reinforcements. Um, and then he so goes into playing with light vehicles. He gets a Greyhound, uh, upgrades his remaining scout. One of them got, got gunned down uh, into a Pathfinder. Gets an engineer out because the Greyhound's immediately eating shots from the pack 40. Um, and then when he sees the first eight rod on the field, he gets a Chathy, which I think is a good counter. And he actually collects the eight rod relatively early. Then he texts grenades. And I think this is smart, right? You see one eight rod then you know more are potentially coming. So having grenades so that your rifles can at least snare and set up additional kills is, is really valuable. Um, he replaces a lost captain retinue. Uh, he gets another squad of pathfinders out on the field. Uh, we'll talk about this later, but the pathfinders he's really using to kind of cap up the flanks, which I think is smart. That's when he uh, builds his tank depot. Um, he decide, you know, goes back and forth on a couple of things, ends up choosing the Sherman bulldozer, which is a good choice considering how much infantry are on the field for uh, Chlorora and the team weapons. The, the bulldozer does really well against the pack 40s in close. And then late gets another uh, Chaffee out in an attempt to fight off the Brum Bear. The Chaffee does get knocked out, but it doesn't matter. Ends up winning the game. And then, like I said, with the airborne battle group, he goes for the, the recce loiter, the paradraph reinforcements, eventually unlocks the carpet bomb, which he used once, uh, knocked out an HMG, but that was all he got for it. Um, you know, Chlorara was kind of all over it with the dodge there. Unlocks the pathfinders, obviously, and then doesn't even bother unlocking uh, the paratroopers or the AT gun. So uh, interesting breakdown of the battle group here. All right, so getting into some of the notes here. First off, I was really impressed uh, with the level of play on both sides. And I was actually kind of shocked when we got into what the 16 minute mark and I looked up at the VPs and realized that Chlorara was down uh, to under 100 because right? it felt like a very even back and forth match. But I think that's a good reminder as you think about how to play Bamonville approach, right? Uh, because the map plays so wide, there can be a, ten a tendency with the retreat pass to try to like force your way up the middle. But I think Trez did a great job of controlling the flanks and that allowed him to maintain a VP advantage throughout most of the game. So even though the actual combat was relatively even, even though the resources were relatively even, uh, he was able to really tick down Chlorara's VPs, which then plays into the decision making getting into the late stage of the game. Uh, for Chlorara, first off, Sniper, 55 kills. 55 kills in a 25 minute match and the Sniper was not out early either. So he's averaging basically three kills a minute with a sniper, which is insane. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this a couple times before, but a good uh, rule of thumb for a sniper is one kill per minute, right? So just absolutely nuts. Hats off to you, dude. Uh, that was outstanding. Um, the second note, the four Gren squads, it seemed like a lot at the time, but I thought he did a great job keeping them positioned to control the center, um, provide a lot of utility, a lot of healing threaten uh, the American light vehicles with the snares. He kept his AT guns and the sniper well protected into the late game. The downside is that, especially as the rifles begin to scale, gain veterancy, um, and the light vehicles come out, the Grens start to bleed a little bit more. They struggle taking territory. They're great in the defense, they're great in cover. Um, but what he really needed was some sort of advanced infantry to help him push and displace uh, the American infantry out of position or to just win fights outright. You know, four grand squads to three rifle squads. He did a great job early of getting those two on ones to allow him to win. But in the late game, he wasn't getting that. It was all even fights, and you don't want to rely on RNG to win infantry engagements in this game. I do want to say also outstanding use of mines. Uh, he put them down kind of all over the place early on the flanks. Uh, and you saw a couple, uh, at one point, the Greyhound and the Chaffee both had engine crits. Um, it's a shame he wasn't able to, to capitalize on those early. But I think it's because he recognized with the two scouts, no early engineer from Treads, meant no minesweeper. Uh, so he was aggressive with his mine placement and it, it played out well. Also worth bearing in mind, he didn't really have with the mechanized battle group anything to sink his munitions into. So mines make a lot of sense. Uh, so well done there. Um, so I think the strength of the mechanized battle group is obviously in the eight rod in the anti-infantry timing. Um, this build order you see 
grens into eight rods with pack 40 and then normally fleshed into uh you know either panzer grenadiers or stoss trooping uh for some late game infantry support relying on the packs to do your anti-vehicle for you um the problem was he invested so heavily from a manpower perspective into that early game play with the fourth grand squad with the sniper with the early pack 40 that he didn't get the eight rods out on time to really take advantage of their ability to run down the u.s infantry and so what this meant was he was forced to kind of contest the center of the map and then try to branch out from there whereas treads owned the flanks and i think that caught up to him at the end if this game had kept going if he wasn't under vp pressure he can maybe craft engagements that are a little more to his liking and take it late use the panther use the vespa uh to force engagements that are a little bit uh you know more favorable but um Preds did a great job of keeping the pressure on right so chloro rod just kept getting fight forced into taking fights he couldn't win and eventually uh you know lost too many units and threw in the towel uh for treads so again i really like the use of the scouts for early map presence I think it's even more applicable on Famonville because it plays so wide. You put a scout on each flank and they just cap faster than the other standard infantry units that you face. So you can grab up the map quicker. Uh, and as you saw, he was putting a lot of pressure on Chloro Ra's fuel. So Treads always had two. He had the two that he would you would normally assume would be his. And then he was making Chloro Ra fight to maintain his primary uh, medium fuel there in the center. That's exactly where you want to be from a pressure perspective. Um, in addition, uh, on the flanks, creating the, the VP pressure, I mean, that was huge and I think ultimately led to him winning this game. Um, this is his use of the paratrop reinforcements ability, like mind blowing for me. I haven't seen people use this in ones, really I haven't seen it used since the game first came out and it was a totally broken reinforcement method. But I mean, for munitions, you're getting manpower for free. It applies to the rifles, not just the actual like airborne infantry. So it allowed him to extend his pushes. It allowed him to, at one point, like he recruited a pack 40 and use it to reinforce. Um, and it allowed him to absorb losses from the sniper without it costing him manpower, right? Because the sniper is getting kills, but if you're getting reinforcements for free, like what does it really matter? Um, and so you can stay on the field, um, kept him from being zoned out by the sniper, right? So he can maintain his pressure. Um, really, really... Uh, kind of inventive solution to the sniper problem really impressive um you love to see it i'm definitely going to try it next time i got to deal with uh, a sniper on the bear mock side um and that's that's really it i think you know super high level play from both guys and i think as you'd expect uh pretty clean uh kind of across the board until chloro Ra was just super super behind on vps uh and then it forced him kind of into a corner where he didn't want to be that's going to do it for us here, uh, and we'll see you all in the next one.